and I'd been tying an extended body stone for swallows and salmon flies that came out of the effective trout flies book and just decided to tweak it a little bit into a hopper we could use down here for some warm water stuff. So we'll go ahead and really the basic premise to make the extended body can be applied to stones and other you know, aquatic insects as well as terrestrials. And I've even used it on things like dragonflies on occasion. So you can use it for a bunch of stuff. That's the main point of this entire lesson is just to get feeling for that. So the first thing we'll do to get started is all of you should have a sewing needle. Go ahead and put that in your vise. Pointing in, sticking uh, pointing in, sticking out. Okay. Yeah. Bill's <laughs> in charge of that. All right. There, there you go. So once we've done that, go ahead. We have some little strips of foam about three inches long or so, cut a quarter inch wide. We're going to go ahead and fold it about, you know, we'll call it 60, 40, something like that. So not quite halfway. You want one end a little longer than the other. And once we've done that at the fold point, we're going to slide that onto our needle. Slide it back depending how long you want the body to be, three quarters of an inch or an inch. Short time goes down. Um, it doesn't matter, you can rotate it once it's off the needle. So either way is fine. Um, once you have that on there, go ahead and Wrap your thread around the needle just in front of where you have your foam. Uh, it doesn't need to be extremely tight, just enough that your thread you know, won't slip once you have it attached, just like when you start your uh, thread base on your hook. Yeah, you just want a couple of wraps that are going to hold that thread there. Once we have that done, we're going to go ahead and we're going to pinch our foam on top of and below the hook. So the two halves, fold it towards the point. Other direction, Mike. Okay. Yeah, over the point. There we go. And this will be the most complicated part of it, I promise. Right. And once we've done that, go ahead and make two loose wraps with your thread around the foam and around the needle and go ahead and just pull it tight and cinch it down. Close as you can to the end for the first one, yep. Two wraps on there? Yeah, just two wraps, pull tight, and just secure it. Yep, no rush. Yeah. Oh, two two loose wraps and then just pull tight. Thank 
Uh, once we have that first little piece inched down, go ahead and pull your foam back, thread forward, just drop it around the needle slightly in front of your first tie down point. And we'll let that foam come forward again. And once we've done that, we're going to repeat the process. Yes, Mike? So, uh, yes, yeah, so you can, we're going to pull the foam back and then pull the thread in front of the foam again. Okay, all right. Just one, one wrap around the thread just to move it forward. Once you've done that, we're going to repeat that process. Pinch the foam on top of and below the needle. Two loose wraps and pull tight. So from here, it's up to you guys how many, you know, how big of an extended body you want. I'll usually just do this a third time. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I'll whip finish. So I'll let you guys take your time and do it, but pull the foam back once over the hook. We'll pinch it forward again. And we'll go ahead and just do two loose wraps and pull tight. So once you have as many body segments as you want, be it three or four or whatever it may be on that abdomen, we'll go ahead and whip finish around it. It'll vary each time. My body's a little shorter on this one than the last one I did. Okay, whip finish right there in place. Huh? Yeah, once you have as many, you know, as long of a body as you want, whip finish on that final tie down point. right on that final tie down point. So wherever you pulled the line tight the last time, do your wood finish right there. Yeah. Me too. Is your, is your wood finish around the around the body? Ar around the body, right into that final pull down tie down point that you made. Yep. <laughs> How are you guys doing on Zoom? Good. Not, not the easiest thing to whip finish over the phone. Once you whip finish, Mike, you can just clip your thread. You can clip your thread once you whip finish. Okay. <laughs> Uh, to size 10 clink hammer is the hook. Yep. Once you guys are done with finishing, we then get the fun job of carefully removing this from the needle. So just grab from the front, hang on to your needle, and slowly kind of slide it off. You'll end up with a tag of thread hanging out the back. You can just go ahead and clip that off. Yeah, once you whip finish, go ahead and cut it, and then you can pull your body off of the needle. So. If you already cut the thread, there's no tag. Right? Uh, well, the tag, you may see a tag come out the back. 
very, it didn't, if it didn't, it didn't. It's, it's part of that thread that's wrapped around the needle sometimes pops out the back of it. Oh, yep. Needle off. Needle off at this point. And we'll go ahead and we're going to thread the shorter piece of foam. Oh, sorry. There we go. Shorter piece of foam onto our hook. And then we'll go ahead and put the hook in the vise. What about the uh, Just right in front of your last tie down point somewhere in the middle. So, from the inside out? Inside out, sorry, yes. Okay, so you're right up against that. Uh, what I'm thinking is the tape. Yeah, I've got. I've got about the same distance as one of my segments between where I punctured it and <clears throat> the front of the segment. Yeah, thanks. So you can see it on the screen now if I found it up there. Got it, Mike? Okay, you got it. That's all I get. So you can go ahead and put your hook in your vice. Once you guys have that, just go ahead and push that to the side for the moment. And we'll go ahead and we'll build a thread base extending from behind the eye of the hook back to the bend. I, it's all going to be covered up, so it doesn't have to be clean. What do you tell Oh, uh, it's between the point and the barb. Anywhere in that range. I know it's hard on a Clint hammer hook to figure out where the bend begins. How far back to the do you carry the thread? Uh, bring it back to just past uh, the the point of the hook. All right, so once we have that thread base on, we're going to go ahead, pull our foam forward, so you have that tail sticking up, 
And we're gonna go ahead and repeat that same process we did while we were on the needle. And we're gonna do two loose wraps and then pull tight. And this is gonna kind of secure that extended abdomen to your hook. You slid it up. I pulled it up to right where, right behind where we finished our thread base. I will say one thing I did not bring that helps as you go along with this is if you do have super glue, this foam does tend to spin around the hook just a little bit sometimes. So if you have some glue, zap a gap, whatever it may be, it won't be a bad, a bad idea to use a little bit uh, intermittently here on some of these wraps. Couple wraps or what? Yeah, two loose wraps, then pull it tight and secure, and you should be all right. <laughs> I did not. I forgot to bring some, so I'm going to go without, and you'll just watch me spin this around the hook intermittently as we go. Oh, I'm just going to wing it. I So once we uh so once we have that secured, we'll go ahead and we'll just knot some legs. This probably isn't hundred percent necessary. Everybody got their foam secured? Sorry. Yes, cool. Yes, sir. Next step, we're gonna go ahead and knot some legs and those will be our back legs on our hopper. So this is up to you. If you really wanna make them look like anything special, you could just put straight legs off the back, but just to give you an idea, tie a knot about midway and then tie a knot down at the bottom if you want a second little segment for a foot. And honestly, they're just gonna drag so they don't have to look pretty. And that's probably the key with these. A single strand of legs? Uh, so this is, yeah. So I cut one of those long strands in half and I tied two separate legs, one for each side. Okay. So once you've done that, get them to whatever length you decide you feel is best. The nice thing is when you knot this stuff, until you pull it tight, you can kind of slide it and make it shorter or longer. So whatever works for you. So you put the little foot only on one, one end of this, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I'm, I'm cutting two separate legs. All right, gotcha. This is really just to have something a little longer dragging behind in the water. So once I've done that, got two of these tied, I'm just going to secure one to each side of the fly. You already need two? I, I knotted two up, so. Okay. Might have to come get side, and then you're doing the other side. Yeah, I'm doing them as separate legs. I've found that can, tends to hold a little better for me. I mean, so this one might kind of look like two legs? Uh, well, no, I'm, I'm going to have two. I'm tying two separate legs. So I've got one here, and I've got a second piece tied on. A, so cut, one long, so cut, cut that one long piece in half. OK, so the knot that I put in the middle, what was it? So it's up in the middle. 
So just we'll take this one, so it's kind of not in the middle, kind of to form a knee, so it's okay. loose there. And then if you want a second, you can tie a little piece that drags off the back, but it's not 100% necessary. If one knot's enough, stick with it, if that makes sense. Tying in the legs is about the most miserable part of this, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't have four knots. I, I cut it in half and then tied two. Yeah, I, I find it's easier to get them where I want them doing that. I, yeah, that, that's the joint. So it, it allows the, if you can see, it allows the leg to rise up and then drop down below it. So that's the purpose of that knot. And again, it may not be completely necessary. That's more for the fisherman than the fish. <laughs> Always wanted to crowd. So that's all right. She's a smart person. Not real. What do you do if that stuff is pointing forward? I just trim off. Once you have it secured, you can trim off the forward pointing portion. <laughs> Again, these legs are going to kind of just go where they go sometimes. Mine are not quite listening the way I want it, but once they hit the water, they're just going to drag behind and move. So, All right, so how long do you want for me? Oh, that's 100% personal preference on how much movement you want to have in the water. These, I've probably got about a half inch up to the joint and then an inch down to the end. So they'll drag in the water a little ways behind it. So how's everyone doing on those legs? I know it's not fun. Mike's got it down. So Got something. How are you guys doing on Zoom? See a thumbs up. All right. Oh, yeah, they, they should, that should be going the other. You, you can probably just, you can probably just, yeah, I think you can probably just pull it back and make it work. It might take a little adjustment, but you got it. So once we got those legs secured, we're going to go ahead, pull the foam back one more time, and we'll wrap this thread forward you know, about half of our remaining distance that we have for the uh, for the shank of the hook. Uh, and I stole Cindy's super glue for this one. This is definitely the section. If you have glue, doesn't hurt to glue it down. Doesn't not required, it'll just keep it from spinning a little. So dab a glue on there. And we're gonna go ahead and pull forward just like we did before. Pinch it, let that glue set a little bit for you and then two loose wraps and pull tight. And how full of forward did you say bring you three of? About half of the remaining shank ahead of where you tie down. Uh, that's it. Okay. All right, now what do we want to do? Just put it there. 
backdrop on the shank. And that way, when you pull the foam forward, it'll kind of seal the two pieces of foam together before you wrap it. Right? <laughs> Oh, it'll, it'll leave it. Just getting through the time first. So I went with this style hook because there's a bigger gap on it. I, I, I feel like it helps a little more in hooking the fish when you got these big extended tails on them. So the tail helps. Well, no, oh, the, I mean the tail helps. I was saying the hook gap using a clink hammer hook. Oh, yeah. You got a little wider gap, so ideally it won't just hit the tail and knock the whole thing out of its mouth. Yeah. All right. So once we have that done, we're going to go ahead and the bottom piece of foam. Go ahead and just clip that off in front of your tie down point. You're done with the underside of the foam. So there's a little bit, and we'll just wrap it to the hook shank. It's not a problem. So. I cut it short. I didn't cut it all the way back. I'm just going to wrap everything. I want it shorter than the eye because I'm going to wrap all of that to the shank of the hook now. Just collapse it down. So go ahead and just wrap forward and back until you kind of smush the foam down, but keep that top piece on top of your hook as best you can, if that makes sense to you. Uh, and end up with something that looks about like that. You don't have to compress the foam all the way, just kind of smush it down a little bit. Once we get that done, we're going to go ahead and knot another leg, just single knot like that. It'll be a little shorter. We'll trim it to size as we go. And we're going to make two of these, and we're going to tie one in on each side of the shank with that knotted point extending back from the section of smushed foam at the front. In the same direction as the other one. Yeah, so the tied part will, I yeah, the, uh, the knot. The knotted part will be directed towards the back, yes. When you squeeze your two halves together, oh, <laughs> We all need that sometimes. Teaching the right word that the commands. Yeah. Well, you know, they use a half. I, you don't even need to use a half. I, I do, and I've got a whole bunch hanging off the front that I'm going to eventually trim here. So you could probably use about a quarter of one of the long legs you guys have. For each leg. For each leg, yes, okay. correct. These legs are supposed to go towards the... Right, so the knotted portion towards the back. Towards the back? Uh, towards the abdomen, the extended part okay. behind the front. Right. Yes. Okay, got it. <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> so 
So the knotted section will face back. I just have the excess ends extending forward still. Can you crank it? So we'll see if uh, on the FX axis. And again, the legs are just going to do what they do once it hits the water. So the exact direction those knots have the legs pointing really won't make a huge difference. They're just a little extra movement once you're in a stream or dragging it across the surface of a pond. No, I did that because my legs are going five different directions. I only have four legs tied in so far. We got more legs than this. No, we're we're good. We're gonna keep. Well, <laughs> for you more. We're, we're gonna we're gonna keep the as long as you keep the front part and don't cut it off. <laughs> yeah, I, I leave leave those tabs facing off the front of your fly right now. We'll just use those as front legs. We'll trim them shorter when we're done. It's an insect that has six legs on it. Oh, that's right. This one's. Uh, Fish can count. <laughs> I know, isn't it amazing? Like ants. They only use the flag and then they count the three. And then they all fight one. All right. So once we've done that, we're just going to kind of dub over the area where we smush down that foam. So we've got some, uh, what is this, ice stub, I guess we're using, right? Some chartreuse ice stub. So we'll go ahead and just kind of fill that gap. Just make a dubbing noodle around your line, wrap forward, wrap back, and we'll have our thread end right kind of in front of those knotted legs. So my thread is right in front of the thorax right now, away from the eye of the hook. Uh, so you'll have two pieces extending forward, yeah. So the knotted pieces pull back, and the two that you didn't knot, the ends just lean forward. I've seen plenty of grasshoppers with three, four, five yeah. legs. So yeah. however many you end up with, as long as it's not seven or eight, you're probably okay. Exactly. Yeah. Legs are optional. I just I just get judged by people when I don't have accurate number of legs on my flies. This is just a lucky grasshopper. That's whoever did it not one leg instead of Perfect. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Right. So once we have that, you've got a little bit of uh, EP trigger point fiber here, or I think we have some what uh, fly tires dungeon and stuff as well. We do all the trigger all, point. This is all trigger point. Okay. So we're going to tie this in as a wing. What this really is meant for is a hot spot for us as the fishermen. I don't know about you guys, but white synthetic fiber seems to pop with polarized glasses for me. So everything has either a post or a wing with this stuff when I'm fishing flies and moving water. So we'll just go ahead and we're going to go ahead and tie that in and have it extend back just shy of the end of your abdomen. And we're going to tie that in. 
We're going to tie that in right at the front of the thorax at the back edge of the dubbing. Anything in front of your tie down point, you can just kind of trim short. It doesn't matter. You don't have to trim it perfect. We're going to kind of cover it up a little bit in the end, anyways. So you tie down at the rear of the dubbing? Yeah, at the rear of the dubbing. Okay. Correct. Fold it back. Uh, you can either trim it or fold it back, depending how thick of a wing you are. I just trimmed mine, but you can fold back if you want a little more to work with. Where would this affect you? That'll be your next step. Uh, you're talking about the foam itself? Yeah. Yeah. But we're going to pull that back in a moment. Yep, so you can trim the stuff uh, in front of your tie down point if you want to. Or Mike, I think, was going to pull his back and just have a bigger wing. Either way will work. Yeah. Oh. Not a lot of traditional fly time materials on this fly out. So once we've done that, the last thing before touch-ups and with finishing we're going to do, we'll take that little piece of foam extending forward over the eye of the hook. We're going to pull it back over the dubbing. We're going to go ahead and same thing as before, two loose wraps over the foam and then cinch it tight. And that'll finish off the head of your fly. So we'll whip finish once you guys have done that. And then we just have a little bit of touch up work and trimming to do. Yeah. I, I think that looks good, Cindy. That's what you want. So, exactly. So, once you've whip finished, you can trim your thread. Only thing that will be left at that point is we're going to take this little excess foam up here, the piece behind the head we pulled back, and we're going to trim that to a little point. We don't need to cover in the whole wing. So, there we go. So, we'll go ahead and trim that foam to a point. And then, after that, all you got to do is trim your legs to whatever your desired length are. So, you can cut those front legs fairly short. And if you need to make any adjustments to your rear legs, go ahead and do those. If you're happy with them, don't worry about it. This this all matter. I could run it through. 
How are you guys doing on Zoom? All making sense? Got it. Awesome. So the foam, yeah, you'll pull that foam back and you'll cinch it right over top of uh, the back edge of where your dubbing is. And then you can just whip finish it from there. It, it, you gotta, yeah, you're, you're gonna have to probably whip finish by hand if your legs are too long. Challenge. And her legs should be about two. Yeah, I, I, the legs get shorter as I move forward on mine. Um, it's it's kind of up to personal preference, though. I mean, only risk with the legs being too long is fishing for bluegill and long ear and things out here. They'll probably just end up grabbing the legs and pulling them under and making the fly. So setting the zoom. To adjust for low light. Oh. I mean, it was turned up too high. Oh. I didn't know that was there. So it was turned up like that. That guy's just gonna hunt some grass off. That's another grass off on the water. I want to go down to the fuller top. That's like a very small small, like it's not even wild species. It's just a shark trying to reach out to it. So now it's like that's paddling at 40 acres. Yep. So then you whip finish, and then you'll just uh, trim that foam down to a little point, and trim the 